in today's class, we have a different section because we are all suffered in COVID-19 recently. So I want to spend a little bit of time to explain how this virus works and uh, the anatomy of this virus and what can we do. And uh, I, will, I want to offer you the latest research result that talk about COVID-19. And on the other section, I think it is much easier that we'll go back to the fishing industry. But I will mainly focus on two or three different kinds of fish. I think you have to know them. The first one will be hammer shark, and the other one is called a sunfish. And then maybe we'll have sometimes goes to the lionfish. But according to the past experience, I think maybe we can only finish the section one. So before I start this class, I want you guys to know the target of this class today is after this class, you should be able to tell me some short story of some fish, like how to, how to identify them and their major behavior, how they reproduce their use. And uh, you may give me a story about how Taiwanese people eat this kind of sunfish. And for the hammer shark, I think you could be able to identify it, that their way, how they go hunting of their food. And for the lionfish, you will have to know how they release the poison they had and what kind of influence they made to the environment in Australia. For the COVID-19, I think you will be able to know the newest research and the equipment we use to identify it, to detect it, this virus. Today, our class will have some goals. The class goals in our class will be divided into two phases. The first phase, I will tell you about the current situation of COVID-19, and how we can understand it, and how it affects its characteristics, its appearance, etc. And how the vaccine is helping us in our daily lives. Basically, we have been affected by the impact of COVID-19 in the past few years. Basically, we have been affected by 然后呢，另一个 section 比较简单，就是我会回到渔业的这个部分，但是我会主要告诉你大概三种鱼，其中一个是阿基沙，另外一个是翻车鱼，另外还有一个是狮子鱼。就是你经过这堂课之后，你大概可以告诉我这三种鱼的它的一些基本特征，然后它的一些行为跟它的一些对环境的影响。然后呢，另外针对 COVID-19 的话，你大家可以告诉我，就是我们目前最新发展的仪器到底可以检测到一个什么样的地步了。So we'll we'll start with the PowerPoint. They're talking about the COVID nineteen. Before we doing that, I want you guys share some experience or some knowledge you had. You could share me some information in your language. It'll be fine about COVID nineteen. Kyler, Kyler, you Kyler, would you mind sharing your experience or your knowledge about COVID nineteen? I wanted to share some knowledge you had about COVID nineteen. Like what kind of virus is it? How it infected the human body? Yeah, something like that. I do not know all that much. I know it's, I mean, coronavirus. The name of it is the shape of the virus, right? Like it's shape,、mm -hmm. and we all see the shape of the virus in pictures everywhere,、mm -hmm. in the circle, the stuff. But I'm not sure how it infects the body or anything. I read from somewhere that the coronavirus、mm -hmm. is a. As we all know, is a respiratory virus, so it's the first damages our lungs and then also our immune system, making us more easy for other diseases to be more effective on our body. So we will get sick more often,、mm -hmm. and the symptoms, how it affects our body, like we our taste and smell, gets less, and overall have trouble breathing and so on.、Mm. Okay,、yeah. do you guys realize why I'm telling you we are lucky? Maybe you are lucky. I'm not that lucky. The reason is this kind of virus only affect the, are you serious affected the elder people? Normally, the people elder than fifty years old will have a more serious things, serious problem in their healthy. But for young people like you guys, 
may only have a slightly some kind of like a fluid or tired, but still don't just, uh, you know, treat it too easy. You know, you got to think about the worst part of this virus. Okay, I think you guys uh, doesn't have much knowledge about this virus. So today we are going to talk about some details in this virus. So, okay, let's start. Uh, let's see, so the first slide is about the COVID-19. Yes, it's become very common pictures we see everywhere. But you can see there are some different kind of shape in this screen. For this one, this shape normally is a bacteria. This one is a virus. Their outer appearance is much, much different. Okay, so the reason we named it COVID-19 is a coronavirus disease and a start from 2019. So we use this co VI means virus and diseased and 1819. So it named COVID-19. Actually, it's some kind of a varieties of a coronavirus from SARS. Do you guys remember the first time we realized this kind of disease, SARS, as from 2002? This kind of virus caused a serious problem of human health. Once you affect it normally, I think over 30% of the people will die within seven days, which is uh, dramatically affect our life. And in Taiwan, we face this kind of disease and the way we stop the transmission of this virus is we block a hospital and let all the staff and the patients in there. I will not say that, but we just let them die. The truth is you just let them die. We give them some food, and, but we block them inside a certain space and then we don't let them go out. But a virus with a serious problem, healthy problem, cause a serious healthy problem can be also a benefit for human because once you affect it within seven days you will die and this virus will only be able to survive in a living creature they won't be survived in dead body okay so SARS was easily to affected human easily to cause people die but it will be more difficult for them to survive if we block them in a certain spaces. So this is the way we stop SARS. And then we find that the other varieties called MERS, yeah, M-E-R-S, in 2015, I think, but it'll be fine. It doesn't cause much problem, but it, it's, uh, it's also affected our lung to causing some breathing problem. People will suffer, but will not die and will be curious. But for now, 2019, we find this virus COVID-19. The COVID-19 itself doesn't cause much problem, but the variety of COVID-19 caused a serious problem. Now, virus infect Taiwan is named Indian varieties of COVID-19, which means it was firstly found in India. And uh, stronger affecting abilities, more serious problem costing to human. Okay, so once we're talking about Corona, we will think about a beer, right? Yeah, maybe someday you don't drink beer, but for me, yes, I drink beer. So the first time I hear about this name, the Corona, I think about a beer. And here's the label you can see, it's like a crown. Actually, the language Corona means crown. And you can see the shape of this virus is also like a crown. So they were named by the shape, yes, like a kind of a satellite. But have you ever recalled to the senior high school biology class? If you still have some memory of it, or you ever take a biology class, you might be recalled the shape of virus should be like this one like an alien with a tiny chamber hand, we call it ten, and it contains the DNA in here, and they have a body. Those part is the equipment, is the tour this virus used to landing on human cell. 
and here, just like a needle, they will inject their DNA or RNA into human cell. And those DNA will go to the nuclear of our cell and start to manipulate our cell to produce other part of its body. And then they will recombine it, regroup the entire body and forming a new virus and then break our cell. This is the traditional way they affect the people. But for coronavirus, it's a little bit different. Hao 那在 2015年左右的时候我们发现了另一种病毒叫Mars 然后你在看到这个图的时候 然后它有这样子的外形 Okay, let's go to the different slide, second slide here. Here is an anatomy and the function of this uh, coronavirus. If we cut it and separate it, we could see inside. The shape of a coronavirus is different from traditional virus, which means it doesn't need a tour to landing on human cell. What do they use to combine, to, to connect it to human cell is here, this one. Spike glucoprotein, or shortly we speak it as spike protein. This protein, this is a kind of an enzyme. Enzyme is kind of a things. If you watch this one, this will be enzyme. This will be human body. Enzyme is kind of a protein. It could only combine with a certain shape of other protein, which means the protein on human cell. This shape only can combine with a certain things. If here is another cell, different cell, but the same enzyme, it will not combine well. So it will not be able to land in on this cell and it won't cause the disease. I was translated in Chinese and explain it again. How? Glycoprotein, 它人体细胞上面的蛋白质有一个特定的形状
苗啊，因为那个细胞上面的蛋白质长得不一样。I will just explain the why the coronavirus in Sai could only affect the human because every each kind of animal have their own and typically protein type. Human have our human cell protein type. Fish have fish protein type. Chicken have chicken protein type. So this enzyme, coronavirus enzyme, only affected and combined with the human protein. So the coronavirus will not affect the bird, cat, or dogs. Okay, this is a major point for now. Okay, but in future, since the coronavirus will be mutation, and once they mutated, and they will have a different ability to combine to other kind of animal. So the newest research published from British, England. The research result told us maybe some kind of varieties of this coronavirus now able to affect the dog. We we are not sure. It just mutated very soon, too soon. Okay. So once we go back to here and see, there are some major part you have to remember of coronavirus. The first one is so this one's envelope. This one, you can see, it was just like envelope was folder and the folder and the folder and the forming, just like a balloon, and there is a balloon inside, content the RNA of this virus. So this kind of film, this kind of a protein called the envelope protein, trying to protect the core, the RNA of this virus. If we interrupt it. Those protein and the break the form, and the whole virus will die. So you can read the word here. We use the we the drugs we invent to kill this kind of virus is normally focus on this part. So we try to break this film, and the whole virus will die. HIV. This kind of virus is also like this one. This gene and the drug we invent very efficient efficient drug right now is to cut the envelope protein. So for now, we try to invent some kind of a drug to kill the virus. So in the future, maybe we just took one pill and we will just kill this virus. Should be better without inject some kind of vaccine. Vaccine also have its shortage. Okay, you inject the vaccine. It not guarantee one hundred percent useful, and it maybe depends on the carrier. This vaccine is for AZ, the carrier virus. For now, this is a vaccine. This is a human body. The way this vaccine work is vaccine carry some kind of a protein. That will stimulate your body to create antibodies, and these antibodies next time facing the true virus, and the human body already have the ability to against the true virus. So vaccine is like a pretended virus. Okay, lower affection. Lower problem to cause the human health problem. Low, lower ability to cause the human healthy problem, and we inject this kind of protein to stimulate human body to create antibodies. So in future, our body face the true virus, and we will have have ability to against it. So vaccine. Now the vaccine we use spike glycol protein. Spike glycoprotein. We try to detect only isolated. We detect this part, the shape of this enzyme, and we isolated this enzyme, and reproduce it, and inject to human body, and let human body to create antibodies. Okay, but if it is just a protein, just an enzyme. Spike glycoprotein is just a normal protein. 
So it will not be able to go to human body directly. They don't have function. So they need a carrier. If this is a carrier, it is another kind of a virus or bacteria. We covered this protein with this virus or bacteria and then inject it into human body and it will release this protein and use human body to reproduce this protein and human body will try to against this protein and it will simulate it and increase the antibodies which will be a good way because use this protein directly will not be able to into human body without a function it will be need a carrier and the least carrier normally is another kind of a virus or different kind of bacteria briefly summary and then translate in chinese okay 在这个区块我要你看到的事情是 coronavirus的图形 我们把它切开来看的话 这个帮我蛋白，它是非常重要的一个东西，它是一个折叠过很多次的蛋白质，它形成一个像气球一般的薄膜。那这个薄膜呢，是用来保护这个virus里面的这些核酸的。所以如果我把这个薄膜切开了
But and I mentioned about the list can live only proteins. It will not be able to go to human's body directly. They need a carrier. They need like a package. And this package will this package will have the function, will have the ability to also absorb in human body and release the protein. So this carrier can be different type of virus that won't cause the problem of human health. Or it can be a bacteria that easily to affect human body, like E. coli, Gene, like uh, the flu virus, like Liu Gan Bing Du. They could only be the they could also all be the carrier. They could all be the carrier. So think about if we didn't select this carrier carefully, and it will cause some problem because the carrier itself can have a mutation. It can also cause human body having disease. Poor English. Okay, then so the vaccine we use right now, AZ. The carrier they use, they select it, is from chimpanzee. It's from chimpanzee. And chimpanzee is a very close family to human. We have a 99.99% of gene is the same. So the major difference between human and chimpanzee, only the skin color, the hair, and the quantity of our brain. So we are very similar. So if you selected the carrier from chimpanzee virus, this kind of virus affect the chimpanzee. It could also cause some side effect to human body. So this is the reason people will have a side effect after they inject AZ. Okay, did you got it? I will translate it in Chinese. Okay, 我们要做一个疫苗的话，我们从那个。coronavirus上面去找出了一个蛋白质嘛，对，那蛋白质需要一个载体，我刚刚讲过，那个载体要能够跟人体结合的，所以这个载体可以是另外一种病毒，它的毒性比较弱的，它也可以是另外一种细
birds this virus star mutation. They change the protein form, protein shape frequently, and this protein, this vaccine will losing its effect. So we will have to reinvent it, a vaccine to a typically type of a virus. So it endless fighting, just like the flu shot, the flu vaccine. We have to inject it, the new one, every year. Because the flu virus also changed very soon. So if we now focus, only focus on spike protein, it will be endless invent of the thing. So different countries have a different way to produce liver thing. Monart, AZ, are focused on spike protein. Why? Because obviously, it can be easier to detect it and uh, reproduce it and create everything. It's very fast speed way to create everything. But like I told you, it's not 100% guarantee efficiency. And it will not last forever because the virus start mutation all the time. So the other country like Japan and like Taiwan, we are doing now is we are invented a vaccine that focus on nucleocapside protein, which is this one. We briefly say this M protein. This protein is covered the, the RNA on the surface of RNA, like covers it. If we break this protein, RNA will die. And if human body, our immune system could detect this kind of a protein, it's guaranteed. This protein will not be able to combine to human cell. So that's a very good way because the vaccine uh, because the virus will only mutant on the surface. They rarely mutant in their RNA. So if we invent a vaccine that focus on importing, it will guarantee very useful and last forever. Show me, yes, in future we were doing that because it mutant so frequently. The original vaccine we inject, we invent the AZ protection ability to coronavirus. The India mutation type variety is already, you know, not so efficiently. You know, we, we, in future, we will do it annually or seasonally. We don't know. It depends on the, the mutate, mutate ability of this virus. 很快的用中文讲一遍哈。我们现在的做法就是针对这个刺蛋白做嘛，因为它很快就可以被发现，然后很快就可以制造出疫苗，很快就可以复制。但是病毒每一次的突变都是突变在这个区块，所以下一次的突变它会变成不同的形状，然后我们的疫苗就会失效了。所以最终的一个解决方法是我们要针对这个 a m p e r t i n 好 ，nucleocapside m u p e r t i n 这个这个 protein 它是。盖在它的 RNA 表面的，我们必须要针对这个 protein， 因为病毒在突变的时候不会突变这个区块的蛋白质，所以如果你针对这个蛋白质做疫苗，然后人体有这样子的一个免疫力的话，以后只要是这个 coronavirus， 它都可以防御了。好，这是一个非常重要的一个一个研究的进程。OK， we、we'll、go to next slide. It's a recently a research,、uh, I think published from China. Is 2020, one year after we have coronavirus. They research about how to keep this virus away from our human body. You know, as a patient already affected the coronavirus, we will speaking and sprayed some air gel that contains the virus into the air, and it will flow. The light part will float in the air, and other people comes here. They will contact this kind of air gel and suck in this virus into the healthy body, 
and be affected. And for the heavier one, it will become droplet that falling down the surface on different surface. Before this research, we don't know how this virus transmit, or you can say the migration. We don't know how they doing that. It might be through the air, might be through the blood, through the food, but we don't understand what COVID-19, how they transmit. But after this research, we realized, yes, they used air mostly and they used the contact transmission as another way. But also with different uh, journal talking about in water, they can also transmit. So this picture shows if we keep the social distance first, it will not be very useful to stop the airborne transmission, but it's very useful to stop the contact transmission. Of course, you keep the social distance, you will not be able to contact each other. But after that, you wear face mask, it will be blocked airborne transmission. So this is the reason right now we are wearing the mask whenever we are going out. But you wear a mask, it covers only your nose and mouth. There are still other opening place that the virus can affect into. Tell me where, besides the nose and the mouth, where those virus can get into our body? Eyes? Yes, eyes. Any other place? Hand, it's not that easy to penetrate it. Not that easy. It, it has to be a part of our body that always wet, like our mouth is wet, our nose is wet, our eyes is wet. There are any other part of your body is always a little bit wet. Thinking about a human connect, okay. Body connect. Ear might be, but outside of the skin, no. Your skin will not always neck, no. Okay, you guys are adults, so the, the answer is vagina and the penis. Okay. So if you make love with someone and he already affected the coronavirus, it's guaranteed you will get one. So this is the TV news talking about the human contact, human connect. This is the reason, this is another way to transport it. Okay, this is a very new research to mention about that. Okay, so we are to have to thinking about, normally we went out, we wear masks, we dressed up, right? We cover our body, block the virus, but still we have a contact transmission. So we have to thinking about coronavirus will not survive in a hot and a dry surface. It's an organism. It needs a appropriate temperature to survive and appropriate humidity to survive. So for this point, number five, the answer might be yes, they will not survive in hot and dry surface, but how hot, how dry, so-called dry surface or hot surface. So we need a further research. So go to the other slides here. It published on 2021. So you can see this is on the dish, on the glass dish. This kind of virus can survive almost 28 days. But it doesn't mention about the temperature. Least research assume the temperature and the humidity is on the best situation for coronavirus. If under best situation, coronavirus can survive on paper, glass cup, steel, glass dish, or plastic dish for over 28 days, which means if in the appropriate situation, it's guaranteed you will contact it and be transmitted into your body. But on human clothes, on cotton, human clothes, normally a little bit drier. On the wooden surface, it will only last for two days or four days. So what is the appropriate 
humidity and the temperature it will be 90 to 95 percent humidity and 36.5 degree is the best situation for this virus so don't worry if this uh, virus dropped on a glass the temperature is zero it will die dropped on a iron on a steel and the temperature is 50 degree it will die very soon it's easy it's very easy to kill this virus just break the envelope protein all the way we use just try to break this envelope protein alcohol could do that whiskey could also do that if the alcohol person is higher than 50 percent even the, the whiskey can interrupt it the envelope and if the temperature is higher than 70 seconds degree, once this virus contact the surface, it will be killed. So it's very easy to kill. You will have to wash your hand almost every time. Because if you don't wash it, this report told us if the virus stop on our human body, on our skin, it can survive for more than 28 days. You touch your skin, right? And once you went home, once you go home, you were took off your mask. If you didn't wash your hand, you touch your body and touch your nose or mouth. Definitely you will touch it because wearing a mask is uncomfortable. You try to touch your skin, touch your nose, and it gives a chance that the virus into your body. So remember, every time you go home, wash your hand, every each part, let explore outside you will have to wash it use the soap will be easily to kill it use the echo could kill it too this is a research published on 2021简单的来说如果在适当的温度跟条件底下的话温度跟湿度底下的话这个病毒可以存活在表面上在这些东西上面在 培养皿里面，然后在不锈钢上面，在玻璃杯上面，在纸张上面都可以存活二十八天以上。那什么是适当的温度跟湿度？就是三十六度左右，跟你的相对湿度大概九十九、十五之间，它可以存活这么久。但
not multi function, it will not be able to combine the all kind of uh, chemistry. Okay, because here you see every each dot, this color spot here, is one kind of uh, enzyme. So on these chips, we have the two different types of enzyme the red one and the green one. Red one will absorb a certain chemical. The green one will absorb the other chemical. But if there comes a lot quantities of chemistry, chemical things or medical things or drug things, they'll be confused. Okay? And if you put too much different kind of enzyme on one chip, this chip will be interrupted and will not be able to detect the chemistry clearly. Okay, I'll explain in Chinese again. Biochip 这个东西它不是万能的 因为狗本身有它自己的情绪，所以我们如果不用活的生物的话，我们就用狗的鼻子上面的一些酵素. We use the enzyme from dog's nose and create the biochips. And we mentioned about the enzyme, right? A typically enzyme combined with typically protein. It's not a multifunction. It's only combined one protein. 如果是在这样子的前提之下的话 so, if we could detect a certain protein from coronavirus, just like the spike protein, if we can identify that, and we could create a receptor on biochips that focus on spike protein, and we could create a biochip to detect spike protein and it's a way it's an easy way to detect coronavirus am i telling the truth 我们可以从狗的细胞上面去游离出一种酵素然后我们可以针对coronavirus上面的酵素去做侦测然后我们可以制造出一个生物晶片然后它就专门针对coronavirus上面的酵素去做检测然后可以快速的检测 the reason we can smell something is because the enzyme on our node was connected to the neural system. Once this enzyme combined with the fragrance from the smells, and the neural system catch, okay, the enzyme will change their shape and send a signal to our neural system and the neural system to our brain to record our memory so we could realize what smell it is. Also, dog has this function, but the dog has much, much stronger function than human. So if we isolate the enzyme from dog's node, we could create the biochips, use it to detect some kind of drug like the heroin, okay, like the heroin, like the marijuana. We could use it to detect it. This part is true. But can we also identify the enzyme from the protein from coronavirus and create a biochips that can be combined with virus protein that use this way to detect coronavirus. Can we do that? I tell you, yes, we can do that. But am I telling the truth? Answer me. In your opinion, am I telling the truth? In the following class, I will let you know, your teacher do tell lie. For now, we can't use biochip to detect coronavirus. We couldn't do that. 
like. 柯宇轩 points out, maybe a certain enzyme will have in their function under certain condition. The story I tell you about using biochips to detect heroin or marijuana, it can be done. To detect a pure chemical, these kind of things can be done. But to detect a protein, a very complex structure, it's too difficult for one enzyme to do so. So if you think think about the protein, it's a matrix. It's a massive matrix, very complex. So how to detect it? It's too difficult for a one for one biotips because the characteristic of a biotips is they could only detect one or two pure chemical. So I'm telling you a lie. Okay, I'm telling you a lie. The biochips could not use to detect the coronavirus. So what kind of a tour can we use it? Okay, I'll offer you a link here. So you can check this link and find further information. This is the way we can deal with it right now. Singapore, you, you, can, you can check these things, check this word, breeze onyx, onyx, breeze onyx. You could check, you could find out this machine by in this link. We could use a machine that's called a TD, GC, MS. It's actually three kinds of a different machine. We combine them together, we can identify a certain complex chemistry. I think you do not have the experience of a GC, TD, or MERS. There are three different kinds of a machine. TD here, use uh, to heating things up. They can control the temperature and they will heating things up. Once they heating things up, those vibrate chemical, we call it VOC, vibrate organizement and chemicals will be floating up into the air. So the first section, TD, is using for heating things up. And the second section is called a, a gas chromatographic, which means it's a chamber, also with temperature control. And we, here is the sample ejection port. This port, the sample heated from TD section will be inject into the GC chamber and they will be heated again. And the last circle is a column. This column will be filled with carrier gas. What is carrier gas? Which means sample is also a gas type, contains chemistry. And the carrier gas is a pure gas, like pure nitrogen or pure oxygen, or pure carbon dioxide, different type of the carrier gas will have a different ability to push the sample. Okay, so we change the carrier gas, different power to push the sample. We will have different result. Okay, in the lab we have to examined several times to design what kind of carrier gas we need. And we have tested several thousands of times to detect it, the appropriate temperature and the gas flow speed. Okay, all the factors will fit appropriately. This sample will float, gently pushed in this chamber and goes to the detector. Okay. The sample with smaller molecular weight will go to a detector first. The heavier will go to here later. And once they reach the detector, they hit the detector, they are sending a signal. Different size things sending different signal. Easy to understand. And those signals was output to the third part called MOS. 
this MOS is mass spectrometer, which means they will detect it, the molecular weight, and transfer it into a picture like here, this one. They will detect, GC will detect a column, will detect a column, a peak of a certain chemistry, and the MOS will to combine it. We said they will detect a functional group and reunite it and forming the original chemistry out. Different part, different function combines together. We could detect the VOC, the vibrant organic chemistry from human breathing. And use this tool, we can detect COVID-19. I told you, let's use the TD, GC, and MS. We could detect COVID-19. You think I just said this theory, said these machines are true? Now you know you have to doubt your teacher. Don't trust anyone, okay? Even your teacher. We may tell a lie. Here's I offer you a link. Singapore already invented this kind of equipment to detect a COVID-19. And it will be 90% corrected. And the Singapore government already giving them permission to use it in airport. And it only takes 60 seconds to detect COVID-19. But not guarantee every time it's real. If you have only very, very low level virus, they will not have enough sample, enough quantity of the sample to inject to this GC. So we're not able to send in signal strong enough to MOS and create this picture. Okay, so if a person who sure, already sure, like got, he got the COVID-19, his breeze will be correctly detected. But for, for a person who doesn't have any symbol of a disease, they may not be able to detect it. I'm telling the truth. Use TD, GC, and MERS combined together. We can detect COVID-19 right now. This is the newest research result. Traditional way, we detect it used RT-PCR. This is the way RT-PCR, which means RT-PCR is a very scientific way to say things, but no, it's very easy. Here is a protein. We use another protein to reproduce more protein, like the original one. With this quantity, and we can make sure if we got this virus or not. RT-PCR focus on the protein of N protein. RT-PCR reproduce the protein of N protein in the nuclear, which means if with this protein, virus RNA do exist, okay, and do have the ability to affect the human. So it's very accurate way to detect a virus, but it takes a long time because we have to reproduce it. It takes about, I think, four days to reproduce enough quantity to detect if we have virus. Okay, so easier way is we detect this one. There's an antigen, which means the spike protein on virus surface. Or we detected the antibody in human. Human body will not create an antibody randomly. It will not. The immune system will produce antibody only when it is under attack. Under this protein's attack, create a certain antibody to against this protein. This is the way our function do it. Okay, so if we find an antibody to against the coronavirus protein, 
in our body, which means I already affected this virus. But if I'm focused on the antigen, which means the protein spike protein on virus itself, it may not so easy to detect its low level value. So it's a rapid way to detect it, but not accurate. Okay, this is the old way. We have three ways to detect the virus to do, make sure if we got this disease or not. This is the old way. The new way now is the way I told you, use the TD, GC, and the MOS. Okay, TD and then GC and the MOS combine together. They are not focused on protein. They focus on the byproduct of a virus. Just like you are human, you eat nutrition, you poo, right? You eat sweet corn, and the other day you will release the poo that contains the chemistry of sweet corn. Also, virus do so. Virus is some kind of a glucose or other nutrition, and they will poo. Okay, those kind of things, so called byproduct. This byproduct, if you have a virus pool here, definitely you have a virus, right? Otherwise, who will get this pool, right? So, if we detect this waste things created, this byproduct created from the virus, we could use this byproduct to identify that we have this virus. It's a reverse way. To examine it. So the TD, GC, MS, the equipment that I mentioned about is to detect this one. Violato, violato, organic components, VOCS, what? It can also use to detect a pure chemistry. Okay, pure chemistry is much, much easier. They are not, this function, this kind of equipment, not focus on protein anymore. It focus on the byproduct. And here is another link you should check, right? It's very new research result. Okay, this is today's PowerPoint. See you guys next week. And next week we're talking about the fishing. And I will introduce, surely I will introduce three different kinds of fish to you, guarantee. Okay, have a good day. Bye.